You guys seem to enjoy the concept of breaking down professional 3D models from modern anime style games. So today we're going to continue with that with a game that not only makes amazing models, but also lets you download them for free to study yourself. This is Jane Doe from Zenless Zone Zero, and we can learn so much from taking a close look at this fine rat gat. So let's go ahead. Now I just want to point this out. The first thing you might notice is everything is in triangles. Uh, not because they actually do this while making the model. They do model it in quads. It's just that the game engine is going to turn all quads to triangles anyway. But I'm sure you could tell that there were quads and where they got split into triangles. All right, let's go here. The white highlights you can see they're separated from the rest of the iris. The colored highlights are textured into the iris. The purpose of detaching the highlights is that lets us change their size and position for different expressions when we make the shape keys. The eye structure, let's take a look. It is not a flat structure, it's a coin shaped structure. It's a little bit concave, we can see that. And we touched on this in our last video. The bottom eyelash is a structure in itself. It's modeled, it's not textured into the face. Same with these parts as well. And you might be thinking, you know, why not just texture this detail? And the simple answer is we don't want this to be tied down to the geometry of the face. We can avoid it getting all pixelated when it's zoomed in. And we want control over it when we create expressions using the shape keys. More on how they use the shape keys later. Okay, next you got the inner eye shadow and it's modeled in front of the iris and it's semi-transparent. That's why we see it all dotted up here in Blender. In game, they'd use actual transparency, but you know, this is such a smart solution. Other games, sometimes they model it behind the iris and it would just be opaque and they would just match it up with the dark half of the gradient of the iris that's textured in. By having it in front and transparent, I think this way is a lot more versatile. Another part they use transparency on is the bangs, of course, as we can see here. I actually touched on this in an old video, this method right here. This is a way to get a little bit of that style in anime where the eyebrows are rendered in front, except unlike other games like Wuthering Ways where they just fully render the eyebrows in front, what they chose to do in Zenless is the top of the hair strand is opaque, then it gradients down to this semi-transparent, so you can see a little bit of the eyebrows. And I think that suits their own style very nicely. Okay, moving on, the eyelashes. They are 3D, not flat. It's very smart for them to split it like this where it's like top half, bottom half, because they can easily get this detail where it's split on the inner corner like this. And also they can angle the bottom half um, inwards so that when you look at it from the bottom, you usually would see like the white. As you can see, they cover their bases. They covered this angle. You can't see like the inner structure of the eyes. And this, this part I'm gonna take away as well. This single eyelash, they don't even bother like extruding it from the main eyelash itself. They just don't care. They're gonna model it as its own separate entity because it's all gonna be controlled by shape keys anyway. No eyeball. Yeah, not needed. This is because the white behind simulates having the eyeball. Like you won't be able to tell the difference unless you actually knew what was going on structurally. Very efficient with the eye socket here. It's all just, uh, but it's just all joined in a single point back there. The eyelid crease and shadow are both modeled, not textured. And again, similar concept with a bottom eyelash. We don't want this detail to be tied down to the face's geometry. We want it to move freely for when like, when it raises the eyebrow, it's outlined inside the texture. So this is one thing that they did put in the texture. The reason specifically why they draw it on for the eyebrow is because it's flat modeled. It's usually a hassle to use a dynamic 3D outline solution for flats like this. The easiest solution is literally just to draw it on. This detail right here, I'm gonna steal it. They uh, texture in this highlight. Very pretty, very stealing that. Oh, and look, the iris is modeled separately and this is of course if they want to make it bigger or smaller in certain expressions. The nose tip, it's textured like we mentioned in the Yinlin analysis. I don't know what reason people have not to believe me when I say that they do this. 
People actually said, no, they don't draw this on, they do. They do, of course, also use a 3D outline, but they use this to supplement the angles that the 3D outline doesn't work in. Then we got the skin, which the shading is baked into the texture, nice and light blushing. And I think legitimately, if they didn't use outlines on their models, they could get away with this style. It already looks so good without the outlines. I just want to point this out real quick. This is the this is the Kuro Games special right here. Like how with Wuthering Waves and how Kuro Games likes to make their characters pout. Oyo likes to do this thing where their character is smirking and the upper lip is kind of like biting, not biting down, but you know that face you'd make like if you're in class and your friend says something stupid and you're trying your best not to laugh. That's the Hoyoverse special. They do this for a lot of their characters, including one off the top of my head, Kafka. But that's their preferred style. Like, it makes the mouth go a little lower than what you usually see. And it gives it a playful look, sometimes a little seductive, and sometimes it's used to make the characters seem a little more mature, like in terms of age and motherness. Yeah, that's how I would describe it. And as we mentioned earlier, these faces are not armature rigged, but rather they're controlled by shape keys. So I, I can't read these, unfortunately, but at least we can, uh, you know, play around with these, see what each one does. And how shape keys work are they're just deforms of the base mesh, where you can move the value up and down like a slider to get that deform you created or anything in between. And the reason this is often the chosen solution instead of like rigged with bones for anime faces is because of the level of control you get from using shape keys. You can literally move every vertex where you want it to be. Whereas with rigging and weight painting, it becomes a nightmare when it comes to the exact details and expressions that you'd want for an anime face. And here's what I touched on earlier where the eyelid and the eyelid shadow move. And it would be a nightmare to do this at like the rigging level where you move the texture of the face to get the shape that you want, which is why shape keys just make so much more sense. Oh, and here's a cool one. Closed eyes for blinking is not the same as closed eyes for smiling. That's smiling. That's blinking. You can easily see what they choose to model versus what they choose to texture. Like for example, button extrudes out. Same with this one. But these ones like the details are so small, like, you're not gonna waste vertices with that. With this. These straps right here. If you know, you know. Okay. Um, I often check out this angle. I'm not kidding. Because everything I make, when I look at the face from this angle, it's, it's very flat. You know, it looks bad. And it turns out this is just the weakness of our art style. And it's okay, because Zenless Zone Zero and every anime game ever made avoids this camera angle for this specific reason. We get some free feet action? No, we cannot. I, I, I should have known. <laughs> I should have known. Uh, so models in the game ready stage, they delete all the unneeded and occluded parts for obvious reason. Saves vertex count and uh, prevents unnecessary goonage. Look how efficient these hands are. My hands are always like a billion vertices, but look at this fingernail. This was like six quads before it got triangulated. And we're almost done, but you know, you know we gotta know. You know we gotta know the sorcery behind this. So let's select the mesh, then the armature. Actually, other way around, the armature first. Go to weight paint. Control click, okay, there we go. Two bones pointed diagonally down. They're connected to this right here, the bottom spine bone. That's how they're weight painted. Weight painting is half the story. We also need to know like what kind of dynamic bone they're using for this. Or if it's just like baked into the animations, but you can see that they don't use a full weight on these cheeks, it's barely going into the yellows. Making my final rounds here, yep. Let's go ahead and call it a day for today. I hope you learned something from our uh, quick little analysis. There's always new things to learn every day. Uh, let me know if you notice something that I didn't notice. I'm just the same as you. I'm just trying to learn and improve. And if you guys want to download and learn from their model yourself, you can go to this link in the description. It's to a Reddit thread, but it contains the links and also explains how to download it because it's in a different language and the comments explain which button you have to press. So recommend checking that out. Oh, and to save you some time, you'll need to download the MMD tools add-on or Blender if you want to be able 
to import this model into your scene. And that does not work with Blender's version four and higher. So I had to download version 3.3. And also when installing this add-on, you can't do the normal add-on import method. You just have to copy the MMD tools folder right into your Blender's add-on folder. And last thing I'll mention here, we'll dive more into this Zenless Zone Zero style. When we create our own ZZZ styled model, and we're gonna go check out Astra's face card so that we can copy all the good stuff. So that's gonna be coming up soon. Hope you stay tuned. Subscribe and you can be on this journey with me. This year, we're gonna try to improve our 3D modeling by a lot. See you in the next one.